It was about seven years ago, during the financial meltdown, I lost my job. Or as I like to call it, I was given the opportunity to do new things. <laughs> I loved being a corporate executive in IT. However, I always wanted my own company. So I thought to myself, if I didn't do it then, I would never do it. So on my way out of Boston that morning, the morning that I was laid off, I started writing my business plan and never looked back. Fast forward about two years, I had a lot to do. I was writing a weekly column for IT World called Your IT Career. I was fortunate enough to be writing a nationally syndicated columnist for a column for Gatehouse Media. So before I continue, let's do the math. Every week, I was on the hook for two 700-word publishable columns per week. I was also on the board of our local Boston chapter of ASTD, which is a training organization recently renamed ATD. I had also joined National Speakers Association as an active member to improve my craft. Now remember, I was starting a company, so in addition to that stuff there, I was also performing all the activities shown here on the screen, as well as others, to try to start and further build my business. If you really think about it, and I look back at it, I was truly overworked. <laughs> Everything I was doing was worthwhile toward building my company. But I knew in my heart that if I didn't find a way to improve my own productivity, then I would either have to stop doing some of the things I was doing, or I would eventually burn myself out. It all came to a head one evening in May 2011. It was a Sunday night. One of my columns was due that following morning. So I did what I always did. You know, I forged ahead three cups of coffee, and three hours later, my column was written. I went to bed. Well, I read that column the following morning. And guess what? To say that it was awful is really complimenting it. <laughs> Truth be told, it, was, it would be best used to line a birdcage rather than to be internationally syndicated. So what did I do? I had to rewrite it. What I should have done that Sunday evening was simply clean my office, maybe just go through my spam folder looking for anything that ended up there accidentally, or have just gone to bed, woke up early, and written it then. I made a promise to myself that, e that morning that never again would I try to perform a task that I didn't have the energy to do at that time, and that I would always try to find a task to work on that matched whatever my current energy level was. I sat back and thought, hmm, I love that concept. And in fact, that was the original start of what I'm talking to you about today. I'd heard about being in the zone, you know, the initial, uh, the initial concept of flow. I'd seen professional athletes on TV who would, after a great game, or would talk about their career in hindsight, would say, boy, those games that I was in the zone, I just, time seemed to slow down. Every muscle in my body, every thought in my head was perfectly aligned. And they would say that the best games in their career were during those times. I experienced this also, but trust me, not as a professional athlete when I'd be writing a column or writing a paper, writing a speech, or also I was a software developer by background, when I was writing difficult algorithms, is that I would be hyper-focused, totally clear, and have incredibly high level of productivity. It's an incredible thing. I've also heard musicians say that when they're in the zone, they are the music. The music just comes out of them naturally. The problem for me is that I'm not always in the zone. So what do I do then? I believe that people have four zones. Top of your game, which is actually what I've been previously talking about. Alert, but not creative. Sluggish, and just trying to keep awake to finish the day. 
If you later go to use this concept, just remember task, T-A-S-K. T for top of your game, A, alert, not creative, S for sluggish, and obviously K for keeping awake. Let's talk about each one of them individually. When I'm at the top of my game, that's when I write, as previously mentioned. <clears throat> that's when I create presentations. For example, the first draft of this TEDx presentation was done when I was at the top of my game. Or what I'll do is, is I'll use it to write presentations for clients, uh, answer questions back to them, write proposals, but things where I really, that are really important to me, where I want to be able to excel. When I'm alert and not creative, I'll write emails, status reports, I'll invoice clients, or maybe, just maybe what I'll try is a top of my game activity with the hopes that it will raise me up a level if I can continue to increase my focus. But we'll talk more about that one in a little bit. Then the sluggish, you know, continue to work. I'd write expense reports, check my spam folder, find graphics for presentations that are coming up, things of that ilk. And then there are times when I'm just trying to keep awake and perform simple activities. The one thing I've learned about this is do nothing on my computer. Why? Because in that state, it's really easy to hit this key instead of that one, delete instead of enter, and lose an hour's, a day's, a week's worth of work accidentally. What I really should do then is simply just clean my office, rewrite my to-do list for the following day, or maybe just call it a day and be done. But the important thing here isn't what this means for me, is what does it mean for you? Here's your big takeaway from my talk today. You can maximize your productivity by selecting tasks that match your current level of energy. More simply said, <laughs> whatever your energy level is at that time, select a task that matches it. If you don't, then one of two things will happen. If you're at a low energy time and you take on a high energy task, similar to what I did on that Sunday evening, is it'll take you twice as long and it'll be of half the quality. Let's look at the reverse. I'm in a very high energy moment. I'm top of my game and I decide to go through my spam folder. Will I do a great job going through my spam folder? Yes. But I'm squandering those times when I could be doing things more creative, more productive. That's what happened to me on that infamous Sunday night in 2011. I decided to clean the house in the morning and write my column at night. I should have done it in reverse. Because if I did that following Monday morning, the house would have still been clean but my column would have been well written and I would have gotten a good night's sleep. When I, tr when I talk about this concept with people, there's some common questions that they ask me about it. I'd like to share those questions with you as well as the answers. The first is, how do you know what zone you're in? My answer to that one is, listen to your body and listen to your mind. Make an honest assessment of how much energy you have and what you can perform at that time. Then pick a task. Wait a few minutes and then evaluate it. Is it too easy for you? You could be doing higher level work or are you floundering at it and saying, you know what, maybe you should back off and bring it down a notch. Make the adjustment and then continue to move forward. Another question I'm often asked is can you purposefully raise your zone? To that, I'll decisively say, yes and no. <laughs> if it's 1.45 in the afternoon of a work day, and you're feeling pretty sluggish because you had a nice pasta meal for lunch, and you're trying to prep for a two o'clock meeting, then yes, you can raise your zone, take a walk around the building, have a cup of coffee, let digestion finish its job, and you can absolutely raise your zone at that time. How about if it's at 10 o'clock at night? You've had a stressful, high energy, mentally tasking day. At least for me, the answer is no. That's what I tried to do that Sunday night, was raise my, uh, my energy level at a time that didn't really work for me. 
Another question that I'm asked is how can you raise your zone? Well, I have a friend who told me a story recently about physical activity. Certainly you could go to the gym. But what he did was he attached a laptop to the top of his treadmill. And then what he would do is he would work on, the, work on his keyboard while he was walking. And the combination of the physical exercise of walking on the treadmill and the mental exercise of being there working, he created some of his best works. One that I like to do is let's say that there's people I need to return a phone call. I'm working on a project with someone and they're either a very high energy person or it's a high energy topic. I'll make that phone call. And what will happen is, is through that conversation, that will help get me more back in the game and raise my zone. Certainly a little caffeine won't hurt, but take that a step further. Sometimes just go to a local cafe. Sit down, get a cup of coffee of your choice, and the combination of the change of venue, a little bit of caffeine, the activity going around you, will let you be more focused and raise you up, or just mental focus. What I'll do there is if I have a big project to do, and it has lots of little pieces contained within it, I'll take the simplest, easiest task, and I'll do it. And then I'll move to one that's a little bit harder, and a little bit harder, and a little bit harder. The hope being that it will increase my, my mental focus is I start with the simple tasks and I'm sort of on a roll. And what it will do is it will raise my game, raise my focus, and then allow me to do more advanced tasks the longer I work on that related project. People often ask me, they say, so what does your to-do list look like anyway? Well, it looks like this is what I do is every task I need to perform, I put into one of these four boxes. Then what I do is I try to decide what is my energy level. And then from there I select one of the four boxes as you would expect. And then the way I select what's in the box is either what work necessitates or quite frankly what I feel like doing at that time. I'm also asked any other advice that you can give us regarding this concept. And there are two primary things. The first of which is, is do things when you're most able. <laughs> That's the perfect example of quickly going from zone one to zone four. <laughs> but do things when you're most able, rather than when you feel like doing it. Certainly if you're really into a task and it can raise your focus, that's a good thing to do. But I didn't follow that rule that Sunday. I didn't really feel like writing my column first thing in the morning, so I said, ah, I'll do it later. And then I paid for it. Imagine if I followed that rule early that Sunday, is that my column would have been written and it would have been a much easier Monday for me, not having to write it then. And the other is don't procrastinate. That's what I, also what I did that Sunday. You know, I said, ah, I'll write it later, I'll write it later, I'll write it later. But even though I was delaying when I was doing it, guess what didn't change? My deadline. So what happens is, is if you procrastinate on a task and don't do it when you're up to it, then it, what it will do is it will force you to have to perform that task at a time when you may not be mentally up to it. In closing, I'd like to leave you with two things. The first of which is, use this concept today, this evening, tomorrow, or certainly the day after. Because if you don't, like all good ideas, it'll slowly fade into memory. as a good idea at the time, but never really implemented. And if it's not implemented, then it won't provide you the value that it really could. Secondly, pay it forward. In the spirit of TEDx, share it with others. Thank you.